Hi, my name is David Yuao. I co-chair with Sebastian Vicuña the IPCC task group on data support for climate change assessments, TG data. And our objective is to improve access to IPCC data, both for IPCC authors and also for scientists who rely on the IPCC reports. So this presentation is just meant to give you an overview of the efforts that uh, we made in AR6 to make IPCC data more accessible and reusable. And the work relies heavily on uh, the IPCC data distribution centers, so the DDC, and the technical support units from all three working groups. So I'll just be introducing TG data briefly, and then Adam will present the DDC and its data creation activities, followed by ALA, the role played by the working group three TSU. So the task group on data support for climate change assessments was created in 2019, and it takes over from the previous task group on data and scenario support for impact and climate analysis. So this previous group was created in 1997 to provide regional climate change information, and it published various guidelines on social economic scenarios, greenhouse gas scenarios, sea level scenarios, and also statistical downscaling. Now, TG data is focused less on creating these types of guidance material and more on data access and reusability. Uh, and so our mandate um, is really about putting data out there. So our objective is to make sure that the IPCC data follows the FAIR principles, meaning data should be findable, accessible, interoperable, and usable, reusable. This applies both to the data assessed by authors as to the data created by authors to prepare graphics and tables within the report. And so to achieve this, we've been working with the DDC, a network of institutions that generously contribute their expertise in data creation to the IPCC. And one of the reasons why we want to do this is that there is an enormous amount of work that goes into the report and its review. Just to give you an example, in ARR6, over 180,000 comments were collected for the first and second drafts of the three working groups. And each and every one of these comments was given a response. So really the data that analyze all of this deserves to be highlighted and made available so it can be used as a starting point for further research and analysis. So our main objective for the sixth cycle is to publish and archive the data underlying figures and tables found in the summary for policymakers and the technical summaries for all three working groups, as well as the synthesis report. And so the DDC is also working to preserve a snapshot of the core CIMIP6 and CORDEX data used by IPCC authors in the assessment, this emission scenario database, as well as other key biophysical and socioeconomic data sets that are assessed. And so archiving and publishing those data sets requires an enormous amount of work and coordination uh, distributed among AR6 authors themselves, the technical support staff, and the data distribution centers. And so now I'll let Adam present the DDC and its data creation activities. Thanks. Hi, I'm Adam Millward from Metadata Works, and welcome to my talk on the IPCC Data Distribution Center. So to support the most important decisions of our generation, governments, journalists and citizen groups all need access to credible, relevant data on the causes, impacts and effective mitigation strategies for climate change. Enormous amount of data is generated for climate change research and it's an incredibly valuable asset. So distributing and preserving that data ensures the full value of the data is maximised and that's what the DDC is all about. In terms of our history, well, we know that trust, openness and transparency are fundamental tenets of the IPCC activities. So the DDC was established in 1997 to ensure the provenance and traceability of all of that data and to ensure it would be high quality and accessible to researchers across the world. They've also been established to support the provision of data and to provide tools and guidance for the IPCC authors, editors and coordinators during each assessment cycle. In terms of our principles, we sign up to the FAIR data principles, so it's all about findable, accessible, interoperable and reusable data, and I'd encourage you to come and read some of the documentation we've got around that. We also sign up to the trust principles around data preservation within data environments, and we sign up to data sites principles around digital object identifiers and archival. So what does that look like in the real world? Well, it's all about traceability, credit and preservation. 
So if we're looking at one of the assessment reports at the moment, let's say the summary for policymakers for working group three, there'll be a number of different graphics. And let's say that figure SPM4, which is all about global GHG emissions, was interesting and we wanted to dive into a little bit more detail. We can then transfer over to the IPCC data catalogue and we can go and explore the data itself that supports those final figures. So there's four different panels, there's four different data sets, we can go and download them, explore them and understand the context of that data. That final figure data is an analysis of other data, other source data, and so that final figure data references those different sources. So the catalogue also then provides the traceability and credit for those different sources such as the Yasser data or the Copernicus data as well. And all of this ensures that the data is preserved effectively so that it conforms to the principles of fairness, findable, accessibility, interoperability and reusability. In addition to providing the data catalogue and all of those preservation services, the DDC offers a support desk for the public so they can come and ask questions and there's an interface to the DDC team and they can also interface with authors and editors and coordinators through that platform. We've got a really good customer satisfaction rating through, through that capability. We also provide a metadata onboarding platform within the data catalogue. So this is a secure area where coordinators can come in and tell us about all of the data that's coming through the assessment reports. And we've got a metadata profile that describes exactly the type of information we would like to capture when we're preserving, we're archiving data to make it more findable through the data catalogue. If you're interested in that, I've put some links in the resources slide at the end of this presentation. In terms of the opportunities going forward, well, we think there's an opportunity to support increased data access and usage through the platform and through the services we offer. We want to fill in the gaps in some of the IPCC data archival processes. We think we can improve the quality and efficiency of data management for the whole IPCC and provide leadership and best practice, such as the metadata profile that we've published on GitHub. We're also looking to enhance some of the catalogue features, so we're going to be creating collections to bring all of the different data sets together. We want to create a bit more of a dynamic user interface where we can preview some of the content and also create a space where events can be published. So if someone's created a webinar like this to talk about the data, that can be displayed alongside the data itself and be available to different type of consumers. We're also looking to enhance the service, so increase the coverage of input and intermediate data sets during the next assessment cycle. We're looking to develop some user-friendly visual overviews and relation that describes the relationship between data sets and organisations across the IPCC. And also we're going to look at establishing federation that will allow different data repositories to talk to one another and start to share the metadata to improve visibility and accessibility of the data across the IPCC. So in terms of the resources, I'd encourage you to come and look at IPC data and search for data sets. We've got some schemas on GitHub if you're interested in metadata profiles. And also, if you'd like to learn more about us, please follow the links below. Thank you very much for listening. Hello, everyone. My name is Ala Kundaji, and I'm a senior scientist at Working Group 3 Technical Support Unit. Today, I'll be describing to you uh, the role of the TSU in supporting the TG data process and the use of data in our underlying report. The TSU is overseen by the Working Group Bureau and works closely with the TG data group in order to ensure the implementation of the FAIR data principles. As you well know, in addition to undertaking the assessment, uh, our authors also produce data and figures to support the assessment. And to give you an idea, uh, in Working Group 3 AR6 report, we have around 320 figures. The role of the technical support unit is to provide guidance and training to the authors, as well as uh, figure and data management. And uh, we are also in the process of produce a GitHub repository that include the underlying data of our SPM and technical summary figures and some of their input data. Uh, we also work closely with our colleagues at the Data Distribution Center who set up a Zenodo AR6 community and we provided them with the underlying data for some of our SPM and TS figure as well as their input data. 
We work closely with the Secretariat in order to ensure that uh, all queries related to figure use are addressed. We work with uh, the data distribution centers in order to ensure the quality control of the implementation of the fair data principle in our report. Just a reminder to everyone that uh, the IPCC does not produce its own data, but rather reproduce data available in figures or post-process data from existing data sets available in the underlying literature. Uh, one of the major data products for the Working Group 3 R6 report is the R6 Scenario Explorer and database, which is hosted at the International Institute for Applied System Analysis in Austria. So the FAIR data principles are there to ensure that the assessed data code or analyses used to produce figures and tables in our report are properly documented and curated to allow traceability and stability uh, as well as transparency of the assessment. Uh, these principles also support the implementation of the IPCC error protocol, which is used should an error be found at a later stage. As for the implementation of these principles in the Working Group 3 AR6 report, they have been implemented on all summary for policymaker figures. They have also been implemented on the technical summary figures and some of the input data sets for these figures. Uh, you can find all archived data for the AR6 assessment in the AR6 data catalog, which I provide the link for here. As for working group three, uh, SPM and technical summary uh, data figures, uh, data and figures, uh, they can be found available in the Metadata Works uh, Data Distribution Center catalog, which I provide the link for here as well. And for each of these figures, we do not only provide the data, but also the metadata, the abstract and citation, as well as information on the derivation of the underlying data and the recommended figure citation. And as I mentioned earlier, we worked closely with our colleagues in the DDC on the uh, providing data for the Zenodo IR6 community. In terms of licensing, IPCC post-process data and figure data are distributed under a Creative Common Attribution license, uh, as long as this does not infringe the interest of relevant uh, license holders. And we made this recommendation in order to facilitate the reuse of the data, both in research by practitioner, uh, the media, and users more broadly. Uh, in terms of copyrights, uh, the IPCC assessment product, be it text, logos, maps, or electronic downloads, is a property of the IPCC, are protected by intellectual property laws. Uh, you may download, copy uh, material uh, for personal and non-commercial use. A limited number of the figures or short excerpt of the report can be reproduced for books, for instance, and there is uh, no charge for this use uh, as long as the original source is properly acknowledged with full citation, be it the chapter or the SPM and full legend. Any queries re regarding reproducing IPCC material can be submitted to the IPCC Secretariat. So to summarize, the AR6 established TG data in order to strengthen the collaboration between the DDC and the TSU on the implementation of the FAIR data principle for the first time in the IPCC. Uh, now that we are in the last few months of the AR6 assessment cycle, TGData will be debriefing on the experience in the AR6 uh, with the DDC, TSU, as well as authors to provide recommendation for future cycle. And this is a key step for the implementation of the FAIR principles immediately at the start of the next assessment cycle with a strong collaboration across all parties, as well as establishing a direct link between contacts and the TSU, EDC, and TG data from the start. Thank you.